Good morning. I'm Lee Jamison, and this is the 116th installment of the Bible in a year. Today's readings will be from 2 Samuel chapters 23 and 24, and from the Gospel of Luke chapter 1, verses 21 through 38. The Last Words of David, chapter 23. Now these are the last words of David. The oracle of David, the son of Jesse, the oracle of the man who was raised on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord speaks by me. His word is on my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, when one rules justly over men ruling in the fear of God, he dawns on them like the morning light, like the sun shining forth on a cloudless morning, like rain that makes grass to sprout from the earth. For does not my house stand so with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure, for will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But worthless men are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be taken with the hand. But the man who touches them arms himself with iron and the shaft of a spear, and they are utterly consumed with fire. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had. Joshua Basabeth, a Tachamanite. He was chief of the three. He wielded his spear against 800 whom he killed at one time. And next to him, among the three mighty men, was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, son of Ahoi. He was with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle. And the men of Israel withdrew. He rose and struck down the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clung to the sword. And the Lord brought about a great victory that day, and the men returned after him only to strip the slain. And next to him was Shema, the son of Aji the Hararite, the Philistines gathered together at Lehi, where there was a plot of ground full of lentils, and the men fled from the Philistines, but he took his stand in the midst of the plot, and defended it, and struck down the Philistines, and the Lord worked a great victory. And three of the thirty chief men went down and came about harvest time to David at the cave of Adullam, when a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then at Bethlehem. And David said longingly, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem that is by the gate. Then the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and carried and brought it to David, but he would not drink of it. He poured it out to the Lord, and he said, Far be it from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of the men who went at risk of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things the three mighty men did. Now Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zariah, was chief of the thirty, and he wielded his spear against three hundred men and killed them and won a name beside the three. He was the most renowned of the thirty, and became their commander, but he did not attain to the three. And Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, was a valiant man of Kabzeel, a doer of great deeds. He struck down two Ariels of Moab. He also went down and struck down a lion in a pit on a day when snow had fallen. And he struck down an Egyptian, a handsome man. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but Beniah went down to him with a staff 
and snatched the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and won a name beside the three mighty men. He was renowned among the thirty, but he did not attain to the three. And David set him over his bodyguard. Ashael, the brother of Joab, was one of the thirty. Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shema of Herod, Elika of Herod, Helez, the Paltite, Ira, the son of Ikesh of Tekoa, Abiazar of Anathoth, Mebenai, the Hushathite, Zalman, the Ahohite, Marahai of Netophah, Helab, the son of Baanah of Netophah, Ittai, the son of Rebai, of Gibeah, of the people of Benjamin, Benaiah, of Pirathon, Hedai, of the brooks of Gaash, Abi Alban, the Arbathite, Asmaveth, of Bahurim, Eliabah, the Shealbanite, the sons of Jashan, Jonathan, Shammah, the Hararite, Ahiam, the son of Sharar, the Hararite, Eliphet, the son of Ahazbai, of Maacah, Eliam, the son of Ahithophel of Gilo, Hezro of Carmel, Perai the Arbite, Egal the son of Nathan of Zobah, Bani the Gadite, Zelek the Ammonite, Neharai of Beeroth, the armor bearer of Joab, the son of Zariah, Ira the Ithrite, Garab the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite. 37 in all. David's Census Chapter 24 Again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go number Israel and Judah. So the king said to Joab, the commander of the army who was with him, Go through all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba, and number the people, that I may know the number of the people. But Joab said to the king, May the Lord your God add to the people a hundred times as many as there are, while the eyes of my lord the king still see it. But why does my lord the king delight in this thing? But the king's word prevailed against Joab and the commanders of the army. So Joab and the commanders of the army went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. They crossed the Jordan and began from Aror and from the city that was, is in the middle of the valley toward Gad and on to Jazer. Then they came to Gilead and to Kadesh in the land of the Hittites. And they came to all the cities of the Hevites and the Canaanites, and they went out to the Negev of Judah at Beersheba. So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. And Joab gave the sum of the numbering of the people to the king in Israel. And there were eight hundred thousand valiant men who drew the sword. And the men of Judah were five hundred thousand. The Lord's Judgment of David's Sin But David's heart struck him after he had numbered the people. And David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. But now, O Lord, please take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. And when David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say to David, Thus says the Lord, Three things I offer you. Choose one of them that I may do it to you. So Gad came to David and told him and said to him, Shall three years of famine come to you in your land, or will you flee three months before your foes while they pursue you, or shall there be three days pestilence in your land? Now consider and decide what answer I shall return to him who sent me. Then David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Let us fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is great, 
but let me not fall into the hands of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence on Israel from the morning until the appointed time, and there died of the people from Dan to Beersheba seventy thousand men. And when the angel stretched out his hand toward Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the calamity and said to the angel, who was working destruction among the people, It is enough. Now stay your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Arona, the Jebusite. Then David spoke to the Lord when he saw the angel who was striking the people, and said, Behold, I have sinned, and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand be against me and against my father's house. David builds an altar. And Gad came that day to David and said to him, Go up. Raise an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite. So David went up at Gad's word, as the Lord commanded. And when Arana looked down, he saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Arana went out and paid homage to the king with his face to the ground. And Arana said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? David said, to buy the threshing floor from you, in order to build an altar to the Lord, that the plague may be averted from the people. Then Arana said to David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seems good to him. Here are the oxen for the burnt offering, and the threshing sledges, and the yokes of the oxen for the wood. All this, O king, Arana gives to the king. And Arana said to the king, May the Lord your God accept you. But the king said to Arona, No, but I will buy it from you for a price. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver, and David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord responded to the plea for the land, and the plague was averted from Israel. That concludes the reading in 2 Samuel and the book of 2 Samuel. And now Luke, chapter 1, verses 21 through 38. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were pondering at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them. And they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple. And he kept making signs to them, and remained mute. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me, to take away my reproach among people. Birth of Jesus Foretold In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, 
will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And that concludes the reading in Luke. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. To gain a wider audience for this series of videos, I ask a few favors of you. First, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can also click on a bell icon and that will make sure that you receive notifications when new videos come out. Then, if you have comments or questions, uh, even if they're critical, I want to hear from them. Be civil, of course. Uh, the YouTube algorithm rewards videos that receive audience participation. So, uh, I appreciate your input. You are a part of this channel as well. Thank you, and have a blessed day.